Hello there and welcome to today's Change Talks, interviews that spread ideas. Today I'm talking to Hannah McNamara and Hannah is an executive coach who helps professionals develop their career, get more out of their staff and win more business from their clients. Before she became a coach, she was heavily involved in sales and marketing and in her first book, Niche Marketing for Coaches, she combined both her expertise. Anyone who has read Hannah's book will know it's an absolute must for any change worker looking to build their business. This year, Hannah and her business partner, Patrick White, released his second book, Business Cookery, Tried and Tested Recipes for Business Success, where they go into what is needed for a successful business. For anyone in the coaching industry, this interview is a must. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So uh, when uh, when you first got into the coaching, uh, when you did your training and you qualified, what kind of questions did you ask yourself when deciding what area to get into? Do you know, when I started off thinking about coaching, I was actually fairly clear about the direction I wanted to take it in. And to a certain extent, doing the training um, confused me a little bit because I could see all of the different options that were available to me as a coach and I could see how this great new tool that I just learned could be used in so many different situations mm. so I had to kind of go back to to basics and one thing I would say is that the the niche area of coaching that I've worked in has actually changed and evolved over the the years that I've been doing it because I started as a coach back in 2004 um, and when I was thinking about okay so what area of coaching shall I get into? You have to come back to what am I actually good at? Right. And where can I actually add value? Because if you want to do this professionally and, and really do it seriously, of course it's a lot of fun, but you have to think seriously about this. Yeah. Think about what are you actually good at and who's going to hire you. Okay. And you, or when you were, so when you asked yourself what are you good at, you kind of came back to the, what, the executive coaching and the coaching small businesses. And yeah, exactly. I came from a, a corporate marketing um, background, so it made sense for me to be working with people in that kind of environment. Right. Um, the, the coaching I do is all business focused. Of course, personal stuff comes into it, but the, yeah. the brief right at the start is, is always working towards a business outcome. So um, I tend to work with people who are looking at their marketing strategy, they're looking at leading or managing a team, their communication skills. And for me, one of the big questions that I had to think about was what hours do I want to work? Right. And I just wanted to be doing essentially a nine to five. So mm. I had to look for clients who were able to do coaching within those hours rather than doing evenings or weekends because while that's great for a lot of people it wasn't right for me okay good so and this kind of moves on to the second question um so that was an importance for you when you started um and as you go through your coaching uh, and career as such how frequently uh, do you review your business to check that it's still going the way you want it to um and what kind of things do you look for when you do review um, do you know, I do this every single day. There's not a every day that goes by that I, I don't think about the direction and just checking that we're still on course for things because the market changes. Um, things change. You learn things about yourself. You learn things about your clients. So you have to keep reviewing things. <clears throat> How often do we work with clients and find that they kind of wake up one day and realize that they've arrived somewhere they didn't want to be? Yeah. If they'd have made those course corrections along the way, they could have been working towards something they really want. So I do review it every day. I also have a weekly meeting with all of my team, and that's really to focus on goals and the progress towards them. And things change from week to week. And I think it's important to have that focus time, just one hour a week, when we're all talking about what are we looking to achieve this week, and also how is that going to move us towards the goals that we have as a business. Okay, brilliant. And and when you um, experience kind of setbacks or disappointments, um, how do you how do you handle those you know, so it doesn't actually affect your business too much? Because you do you do uh, work as part of a team and, and things. So how do you um, how do you approach those type of things? Well, there are always going to be setbacks and disappointments. People will have been talking to you for months about a, a piece of co corporate coaching work, and then for whatever reason, it falls through. So 
what I've found over the years is that just keep that emotional detachment from it. Don't get so hung up about it being a success or a failure. It's just circumstances have changed. And over the years, I've worked with a lot of coaches who were going into business for the first time, and they were really following something they were passionate about. And something I kept on saying to them is when somebody says no, they're not rejecting you, not rejecting mm. you as a person. What they're rejecting is the proposition. So okay. something in what you're saying to them isn't quite what they're looking for or the fit's not right. So this is why you need to keep looking at it every day to see how you can improve. And there's a, a Japanese principle called Kaizen, which is about um, continuous improvement. And it's, it's those little tweaks and course corrections are on the way, that are along the way that help you to deal with those setbacks and, and disappointments so yeah. that you can see them positively and actually learn from them. And I suppose that ongoing um, daily development helps you to get that emotional detachment, uh, stops you being in the moment at that point in time and uh, stepping back and kind of reviewing it um, like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and it is important to have other people around you that you can talk to um, because often we kind of beat ourselves up a bit more than we really should. And we say things to ourselves that are so unkind that we wouldn't even dream about saying them to somebody else. So just going in and having that reality check with people and to be able to step back and do all the things that we would want to do with our clients, help them to get that distance that they can really see what's going on, not what they feel is going on. Yeah, I certainly found it when I when I started working with someone else, how uh, how differently something looked uh, when you spoke about it with someone else that was either in the business or, or um, had a little bit further ahead than you. And yeah. you can kind of see it from different angles when you, when you get into that um, interaction. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, in regards to uh, when, when you're in the business, how how do you import? How much importance do you put on uh, one productivity, but also taking that time away from your business to recharge your batteries? Because um, upon speaking to people like business owners, not just in the coaching business, but in other areas as well, sometimes, especially when they're new to a business, they feel guilty when they take that time away. But by the same token, they're, they're equally drained by having all that time and uh, spent within the business. So mm -hmm. how, how would you deal with that? You know, when I started off, I was doing what a lot of people do, and I had a home office and was working from home. And on the face of it, it would seem perfect. You've got your work-life balance. You only work the hours you want to work. You can, and you hear all these people saying, "Go to work in your pajamas and things like that." I actually found that very unhelpful because um, I prepare for a working day by getting ready for work. And when you're sitting there working in your pajamas, you, you're not productive. No. So I found that. When I was working from home, I was putting in long hours unnecessarily, turning on the computer at, say, 7, 7.30, and blinking, and it was 11 o'clock at night. And I'd, I'd done stuff, but I probably could have got it done in a lot less time if I wasn't faffing. Yes. Now, the danger with working from home like that is that you can't leave the office behind. So what I learned to do was take a walk around the park, in the morning right. and in the evening to literally like commute to work. Um, that, was, that was kind of your checking in and checking out as, as such. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And being able to shut the door on it and not be thinking, oh, I need to check my website, I need to check if an email's come in. Um, and I think that this was part of the choice that I made about the clients I wanted to work with, that in working with people who would only want to work during office hours, Yeah. I started to realize they're not expecting an email back at 10 o'clock at night. They, they will look at you and think, okay, you, you're going to work with me on my work-life balance. <clears throat> What's yours looking like? Um, so I took the decision a few years ago to, with my business partner, get an office, and we each commute into London. And it improved the work-life balance no end because I had a – um, had a definite start and end to the day. I start at 8.30 and I leave on the dock at 4.45 to get my train home. Right. And everybody knows that outside of those hours, that's my time. Um, so clients don't get in touch with me outside of those hours. And, and, you know, actually having that commute gives me time to read books, to listen to audios, to think, to plan, 
And so by the time I get home, I'm actually refreshed and ready to be at home. And you find yourself more productive when you put out those um, those markers for yourself, did you? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, okay. definitely. Because, you know, you've only got a certain amount of hours to get the work done. And if you've got in, indefinite amounts of time, the work spreads out to fill it. Okay, brilliant. So um, as, a, as a coach, when you're working with clients, what, what are the kind of the most common uh, thing, areas that come up when, when you are working with them? And what are your aims when, when you do work with those clients? Well, I coach many people around business. So the, the sort of brief that I'm working to is to improve their leadership, their management skills, their communications, their people skills. Um, and really what we're focusing on is getting results. It's not about them buying a coaching session. It's about working them towards the outcome that they want to achieve. I also coach business owners on their marketing strategy. And you know, the same stuff comes up in, in those sessions because often people kind of know what they need to do. They need to sort of check in with you and build their confidence that they're actually going in the right direction. I would say that the kind of coaching that is my style is a blend of coaching and mentoring and right. the reason for that is that my clients come to me because of my experience um, I've been in marketing since oh, sales and marketing since the late 80s um, and so I would actually be doing my clients a disservice if I knew the answer to something and they were asking me for it and I didn't at least share some ideas with them Yes, um, yes. So it's it's very much focused on outcomes um, and using coaching is just one of the tools that's available to me to help the client get what they want. Okay, so it's sort of very, very um, multidisciplinary as such. It's you know you don't just focus on the coaching. If mentoring, if the need for mentoring comes up, you you uh, give that as well. Yeah, and I find that because I'm working with very senior people in business, they haven't got the time to mess about. Um, <laughs> and and actually, if I'd been briefed to come in and work with them on, say, their management skills, yes, we might identify that other things need working on as well, but the company's paying the bill. <laughs> and that's yes. the thing to remember if you're going to work with businesses. Your client is the company, not the person who you're coaching. And so you've right, got okay. to work to the brief you're given. Brilliant. Okay. So based on over a week, uh, you know, you, you do your nine till half four, nine till five, uh, Monday to Friday, how much, uh, if we use the Michael Gerber approach, how much do you um, spend on your business and how much do you spend in your business? And if you were compare that now to when you first started out at coaching, has that ratio changed at all? Um, interesting question. Um, because the two are very interlinked. Um, because of my marketing background, I see working on the business as doing all the marketing. Mm. And if I was in a, a marketing job, that would be classed as working in the business. Okay. So it kind of it blends. When I'm not coaching, I'm marketing. When I'm not training, I'm marketing. When I'm not writing, speaking, I'm marketing. I'm always doing something to think, yes. okay, a few months down the line, what do I need to do? To have the clients there in the pipeline you stop marketing and your business will grind to a halt you can't just say right I've made it and clients are automatically going to come to me people they don't care as much about your business as you do to be really yeah. brutal and you've got to keep reminding them that you're out there right okay so I would say probably you ask for ratios it's probably about 50 50 